Nazi Germany built extermination camps also called death camps or killing centers during the Holocaust in World War II, to systematically murder millions of Jews. Others were murdered at the death camps as well, including Poles, Soviet POWs, and Roma. The victims of death camps were primarily killed by gassing, either in permanent installations constructed for this specific purpose, or by means of gas vans. Some Nazi camps, such as Auschwitz and Majdanek, served a dual purpose before the end of the war in 1945, extermination by poison gas, but also through extreme work under starvation conditions, the idea of mass extermination with the use of stationary facilities to which the victims were taken by train, was the result of earlier Nazi experimentation with chemically manufactured poison gas during the secretive action T4 euthanasia program against hospital patients with mental and physical disabilities. The technology was adapted, expanded, and applied in wartime to unsuspecting victims of many ethnic and national groups. The Jews were the primary target, accounting for over 90% of the extermination camp death toll. The genocide of the Jewish people of Europe was the Third Reich's final solution to the Jewish question. It is now collectively known as the Holocaust, during which 11 million others were also murdered. Extermination camps were also set up by the fascist Ustase regime of the independent state of Croatia, a puppet state of Germany, which carried out genocide between 1941 and 1945 against Serbs, Jews, Roma and its Croat and Bosniak Muslim political opponents. <laughs> <laughs> Background After the invasion of Poland in September 1939, the secret action T4 euthanasia program, the systematic murder of German, Austrian and Polish hospital patients with mental or physical disabilities, was initiated by the SS in order to eliminate life unworthy of life. German, Lebensunwärts Leben, a Nazi designation for people who had no right to life. In 1941, the experience gained in the secretive killing of these hospital patients led to the creation of extermination camps for the implementation of the final solution. By then, the Jews were already confined to new ghettos and interned in Nazi concentration camps along with other targeted groups, including Roma, and the Soviet POWs. The Nazi endlossing der Judenfridge, the final solution of the Jewish question, based on the systematic killing of Europe's Jews by gassing, began during Operation Reinhard, after the onset of the Nazi-Soviet War of June 1941. The adoption of the gassing technology by Nazi Germany was preceded by a wave of hands-on killings carried out by the SS Einsatzgruppen, who followed the Wehrmacht army during Operation Barbarossa on the Eastern Front. The camps designed specifically for the mass gassings of Jews were established in the months following the Wannsee Conference chaired by Reinhard Heydrich in January 1942 in which the principle was made clear that the Jews of Europe were to be exterminated. Responsibility for the logistics were to be executed by the program administrator, Adolf Eichmann. On 13 October 1941, the SS and police leader Adilo Globoknik stationing in Lublin received an oral order from Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler, anticipating the fall of Moscow, to start immediate construction work on the killing center at Belzec in the general government territory of occupied Poland. Notably, the order preceded the Wannsee Conference by three months, but the gassings at Kulmorf north of Woods using gas vans began already in December, under Sturmbannführer Herbert Lang. The camp at Belzec was operational by March 1942, with leadership brought in from Germany under the guise of Organisation TODT OT. By mid-1942, two more death camps had been built on Polish lands for Operation Reinhard, Sobibor ready in May 1942 under the command of Hauptsturmführer Franz Stangl, and Treblinka operational by July 1942 under Obersturmführer Ermfried Ebel from T4, the only doctor to have served in such a capacity. Auschwitz concentration camp was fitted with brand new gassing bunkers in March 1942. Majdanek had them built in September. Topic Definition 
The Nazis distinguished between extermination and concentration camps, although the terms extermination camp and death camp were interchangeable, each referring to camps whose primary function was genocide. Todeslagers were designed specifically for the systematic killing of people delivered en masse by the Holocaust trains. The executioners did not expect the prisoners to survive more than a few hours beyond arrival at Belzets, Sobibor, and Treblinka. The Reinhard extermination camps were under Globotnik's direct command, each of them was run by 20 to 35 men from the SS Totenkopf the Bande branch of the Schutzstaffel, augmented by about 100 Tronikas, auxiliaries mostly from Soviet Ukraine, and up to 1,000 Sonderkommando slave laborers each. The Jewish men, women and children were delivered from the ghettos for special treatment. In an atmosphere of terror by uniformed police battalions from both, Orpo and Shupo, death camps differed from concentration camps located in Germany proper, such as Bergen-Belsen, Oranienburg, Ravensbrück, and Sachsenhausen, which were prison camps set up prior to World War II for people defined as undesirable. From March 1936, all Nazi concentration camps were managed by the SS Totenkopfverbande, the Skull Units, SSTV, who operated extermination camps from 1941 as well. An SS anatomist, Dr. Johann Kramer, after witnessing the gassing of victims at Birkenau, wrote in his diary on 2 September 1942, Dante's Inferno seems to me almost a comedy compared to this. They don't call Auschwitz the camp of annihilation for nothing. The distinction was evident during the Nuremberg trials, when Dieter Wisleisseny, a deputy to Adolf Eichmann, was asked to name the extermination camps, and he identified Auschwitz and Majdanek as such. Then, when asked, How do you classify the camps Mauthausen, Dachau, and Buchenwald? He replied, they were normal concentration camps, from the point of view of the Department of Eichmann. Irrespective of roundups for extermination camps, the Nazis abducted millions of foreigners for slave labor in other types of camps, which provided perfect cover for the extermination program. Prisoners represented about a quarter of the total workforce of the Reich, with mortality rates exceeding 75% due to starvation, disease, exhaustion, executions, and physical brutality. History In the early years of World War II, the Jews were primarily sent to forced labor camps and ghettoized, but from 1942 onward they were deported to the extermination camps under the guise of resettlement. For political and logistical reasons, the most infamous Nazi German killing factories were built in occupied Poland, where most of the intended victims lived. Poland had the greatest Jewish population in Nazi controlled Europe. On top of that, the new death camps outside the pre-war borders of the Third Reich proper could be kept secret from the German civil populace. <laughs> Pure extermination camps During the initial phase of the final solution, gas vans producing poisonous exhaust fumes were developed in the occupied Soviet Union USSR and at the Chelmno extermination camp in occupied Poland, before being used elsewhere. The killing method was based on experience gained by the SS during the secretive action T4 program of involuntary euthanasia. There were two types of death chambers operating during the Holocaust, unlike at Auschwitz, where the cyanide-based Zyklon B was used to exterminate trainloads of prisoners under the guise of relocation. The camps at Treblinka, Belzets, and Sobibor, built during Operation Reinhard October 1941 to November 1943, used lethal exhaust fumes produced by large internal combustion engines. The three killing centers of Einsatz Reinhard were constructed predominantly for the extermination of Poland's Jews trapped in the Nazi ghettos. 
At first, the victims' bodies were buried with the use of crawler excavators, but they were later exhumed and incinerated in open-air pyres to hide the evidence of genocide in what became known as Sonderaktion 1005, whereas the Auschwitz II Auschwitz -Birkenau and Majdanek camps were parts of a labor camp complex. The Chelmno and Operation Reinhard death camps were built exclusively for the rapid extermination of entire communities of people, primarily Jews, within hours of their arrival. All were constructed near branch lines that linked to the Polish railway system, with staff members transferring between locations. These camps had almost identical design, they were several hundred meters in length and width, and were equipped with only minimal staff housing and support installations not meant for the unlucky hordes crammed into the railway transports. The Nazis deceived the victims upon their arrival, telling them that they were at a temporary transit stop, and would soon continue to German Arbeitslagers work camps farther to the east. Selected able-bodied prisoners delivered to the death camps were not immediately killed, but instead were pressed into labor units called Sonderkommandos to help with the extermination process by removing corpses from the gas chambers and burning them. <laughs> <laughs> Concentration and extermination camps At the camps of Operation Reinhard, including Belzets, Sobibor, and Treblinka, trainloads of prisoners were destined for immediate death in gas chambers designed exclusively for that purpose. The mass killing facilities were developed at about the same time inside the Auschwitz e Birkenau subcamp of a forced labor complex, and at the Majdanek concentration camp. In most other camps, prisoners were selected for slave labor first, they were kept alive on starvation rations and made available to work as required. Auschwitz, Majdanek, and Jasnovac were retrofitted with Zyklon B gas chambers and crematoria buildings as the time went on, remaining operational until war's end in 1945. The Meili Trostanese extermination camp in the USSR initially operated as a prison camp. It became an extermination camp later in the war with victims undergoing mass shootings. This was supplemented with gassings in a van by exhaust fumes from October 1943. The Sashmist concentration camp operated by the Nazis in Yugoslavia had a gas van stationed for use from March to June 1942. Once the industrial killings were completed, the van was returned to Berlin. After a refit the van was then sent to Meili Trostanets for use at the camp there. The Janowska concentration camp near LWOW now Lviv in occupied eastern Poland implemented a selection process. Some prisoners were assigned to work before death. Others were either transported to Belzets or victims of mass shootings on two slopes in the Piaski sand hills behind the camp. The Warsaw concentration camp was a camp complex of the German concentration camps, possibly including an extermination camp located in German-occupied Warsaw. The various details regarding the camp are very controversial and remain subject of historical research and public debate. <laughs> Other means of extermination With the support of Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy, the independent state of Croatia NDH was established on 10 April 1941, and adopted parallel racial and political doctrines. Death camps were established by the Fascist Ustase government for contributing to the Nazi final solution to the Jewish problem. The killing of Roma people, and the elimination of political opponents, but most significantly to achieve the destruction of the Serbian population of the NDH. The degree of cruelty with which the Serb population was persecuted by Ustase men shocked even the Germans. The Jadovno concentration camp was located in a secluded area about 20 kilometers 12 miles from the town of Gospic. It held thousands of Serbs and Jews over a period of 122 days from May to August 1941. Prisoners were usually but not exclusively killed by being pushed into deep ravines located near the camp. The Jasnovac concentration camp complex of five sub camps replaced Jadovno. Many inmates arriving at Jasnovac were scheduled for systematic extermination. An important criterion for selection was the duration of a prisoner's anticipated detention. 
Strong men who were capable of labor and sentenced to less than three years of incarceration were allowed to live. All inmates with indeterminate sentences or sentences of three years or more were immediately scheduled for execution, regardless of their level of fitness. Some of the mass executions were mechanical according to Nazi methodology. Others were performed manually with tools such as mallets and agricultural knives and these tools were often used to throw victims off the end of a ramp into the river Sava. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Extermination procedure. Heinrich Himmler visited the outskirts of Minsk in 1941 to witness a mass shooting. He was told by the commanding officer there that the shootings were proving psychologically damaging to those being asked to pull the triggers. Thus Himmler knew another method of mass killing was required. After the war, the diary of the Auschwitz commandant, Rudolf Hoss, revealed that psychologically unable to endure wading through blood any longer, Many Einsatzkommandos, the killers, either went mad or killed themselves. The Nazis had first used gassing with carbon monoxide cylinders to kill 70,000 disabled people in Germany in what they called a euthanasia program to disguise that mass murder was taking place. Despite the lethal effects of carbon monoxide, this was seen as unsuitable for use in the East due to the cost of transporting the carbon monoxide in cylinders. Each extermination camp operated differently, yet each had designs for quick and efficient industrialized killing. While Hoss was away on an official journey in late August 1941, his deputy, Karl Fritsch, tested out an idea. At Auschwitz, clothes infested with lice were treated with crystallized prussic acid. The crystals were made to order by the IG Farben Chemicals Company for which the brand name was Zyklon B. Once released from their container, Zyklon B crystals in the air released a lethal cyanide gas. Fritzich tried out the effect of Zyklon B on Soviet POWs, who were locked up in cells in the basement of the bunker for this experiment. Hoss on his return was briefed and impressed with the results and this became the camp strategy for extermination as it was also to be at Majdanek. Besides gassing, the camp guards continued killing prisoners via mass shooting, starvation, torture, etc. <laughs> Gassings SS Obersturmführer Kurt Gerstein, of the Institute for Hygiene of the Waffen SS, told a Swedish diplomat during the War of Life in a death camp. He recounted that, on 19 August 1942, he arrived at Belzet's extermination camp, which was equipped with carbon monoxide gas chambers, and was shown the unloading of 45 train cars filled with 6,700 Jews, many already dead. The rest were marched naked to the gas chambers, where, Unterscharfera Hackenholt was making great efforts to get the engine running. But it doesn't go. Captain Worth comes up. I can see he is afraid, because I am present at a disaster. Yes, I see it all and I wait. My stopwatch showed it all, 50 minutes, 70 minutes, and the diesel engine did not start. The people wait inside the gas chambers. In vain. They can be heard weeping. Like in the synagogue. Says Professor Fannensteel, his eyes glued to a window in the wooden door. Furious, Captain Worth lashes the Ukrainian Troniki, assisting Hackenholt 12, 13 times, in the face. After 2 hours and 49 minutes, the stopwatch recorded it all, the diesel started. Up to that moment, the people shut up in those four crowded chambers were still alive, 4 times 750 persons, in 4 times 45 cubic meters. Another 25 minutes elapsed. Many were already dead, that could be seen through the small window, because an electric lamp inside lit up the chamber for a few moments. After 28 minutes, only a few were still alive. Finally, after 32 minutes, all were dead. Dentists then hammered out gold teeth, bridges, and crowns. In the midst of them stood Captain Worth. He was in his element, and, showing me a large can full of teeth, he said, See, for yourself, the weight of that gold. It's only from yesterday, and the day before. You can't imagine what we find every day, dollars, diamonds, gold. 
You'll see for yourself. Kurt Gerstein Auschwitz Camp Commandant Rudolf Hoss reported that the first time Zyklon B pellets were used on the Jews, many suspected they were to be killed, despite having been deceived into believing they were to be deloused and then returned to the camp. As a result, the Nazis identified and isolated difficult individuals who might alert the prisoners, and removed them from the mass, lest they incite revolt among the deceived majority of prisoners en route to the gas chambers. The Difficult. Prisoners were led to a site out of view to be killed off discreetly. A prisoner Sonderkommando special detachment affected in the processes of extermination, they encouraged the Jews to undress without a hint of what was about to happen. They accompanied them into the gas chambers outfitted to appear as shower rooms with non-working water nozzles, and tile walls, and remained with the victims until just before the chamber door closed. To psychologically maintain the calming effect of the delousing deception, an SS man stood at the door until the end. The Sonderkommando talked to the victims about life in the camp to pacify the suspicious ones, and hurry them inside. To that effect, they also assisted the aged and the very young in undressing, to further persuade the prisoners that nothing harmful was happening. The Sonderkommando deceived them with small talk about friends or relations who had arrived in earlier transports. Many young mothers hid their infants beneath their piled clothes fearing that the delousing disinfectant might harm them. Camp Commandant Hoss reported that the men of the special detachment were particularly on the lookout for this and encouraged the women to take their children into the shower room. Likewise, the Sonderkommando comforted older children who might cry because of the strangeness of being undressed in this fashion. Yet, not every prisoner was deceived by such psychological tactics. Commandant Hoss spoke of Jews, who either guessed, or knew, what awaited them, nevertheless. They found the courage to joke with the children, to encourage them, despite the mortal terror visible in their own eyes. Some women would suddenly give the most terrible shrieks while undressing, or tear their hair, or scream like maniacs. The Sonderkommando immediately took them away for execution by shooting. In such circumstances, others, meaning to save themselves at the gas chamber's threshold, betrayed the identities and revealed the addresses of those members of their race still in hiding. Once the door of the filled gas chamber was sealed, pellets of Zyklon B were dropped through special holes in the roof. Regulations required that the camp commandant supervise the preparations, the gassing through a peephole, and the aftermath looting of the corpses. Commandant Hoss reported that the gassed victims showed no signs of convulsion. The Auschwitz camp physicians attributed that to the paralyzing effect on the lungs of the Zyklon B gas, which killed before the victim began suffering convulsions. As a matter of political training, some high-ranked Nazi Party leaders and SS officers were sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau to witness the gassings. Hoss reported that all were deeply impressed by what they saw. Yet some who had previously spoken most loudly about the necessity for this extermination fell silent once they had actually seen the final solution of the Jewish problem. As the Auschwitz camp commandant Rudolf Hoss justified the extermination by explaining the need for the iron determination with which we must carry out Hitler's orders, yet saw that even Adolf Eichmann, who certainly was tough enough, had no wish to change places with me. Topic corpse disposal After the gassings, the Sonderkommando removed the corpses from the gas chambers, then extracted any gold teeth. Initially, the victims were buried in mass graves, but were later cremated during Sonderaktion 1005 in all camps of Operation Reinhard. The Sonderkommando were responsible for burning the corpses in the pits, stoking the fires, draining surplus body fat and turning over the mountain of burning corpses, so that the draft might fan the flames, wrote Commandant Hoss in his memoir while in the Polish custody. He was impressed by the diligence of prisoners from the so-called special detachment who carried out their duties despite their being well aware that they, too, would meet exactly the same fate in the end. 
At the Lazaret killing station they held the sick so they would never see the gun while being shot. They did it in such a matter-of-course manner that they might, themselves, have been the exterminators, wrote Hoss. He further said that the men ate and smoked even when engaged in the grisly job of burning corpses which had been lying for some time in mass graves. They occasionally encountered the corpse of a relative, or saw them entering the gas chambers. According to Hoss they were obviously shaken by this but it never led to any incident. He mentioned the case of a Sonder commando who found the body of his wife, yet continued to drag corpses along as though nothing had happened. At Auschwitz, the corpses were incinerated in crematoria and the ashes either buried, scattered, or dumped in the river. At Sobibor, Treblinka, Belzets, and Chelmno, the corpses were incinerated on pyres. The efficiency of industrialized killing at Auschwitz-Birkenau led to the construction of three buildings with crematoria designed by specialists from the firm J. A. Toff and Sona. They burned bodies 24 hours a day, and yet the death rate was at times so high that corpses also needed to be burned in open-air pits. <laughs> Ustase camps The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum USHMM, in Washington, D.C., presently estimates that the Ustasa regime in Croatia murdered between 77,000 and 99,000 people at the Jasnovac concentration camp between 1941 and 1945. The Jasnovac memorial site quotes a similar figure of between 80,000 and 100,000 victims. An episode of the television documentary Nazi collaborators described the crimes of Dinko Sakic and stated that over 300,000 people were killed at Jasnovac. The mechanical means of mass killing at Jasnovac initially included the use of gas vans and later Zyklon B in stationary gas chambers. The Jasnovac guards were also reported to have cremated living inmates in the crematorium. A notable difference with the Ustase camps as compared to the German SS camps was the widespread use of manual methods in the mass killings. These involved instruments such as mallets and agricultural knives which were often used in a manner where victims were thrown off the end of a ramp into the Sava River while they were still alive. The estimates for the Jadovno concentration camp generally offer a range of 10,000 to 72,000 deaths at the camp over a period of 122 days May to August 1941. Most commonly Jadovno victims were bound together in a line and the first few victims were murdered with rifle butts or other objects. Afterwards, an entire row of inmates were pushed into the ravine. Hand grenades were hurled inside in order to finish off the victims. Dogs would also be thrown in to feed on the wounded and the dead. Inmates were also killed by machine gunfire, as well as with knives and blunt objects. <laughs> <laughs> Death toll The estimated total number of people executed in the Nazi extermination camps in the table below is over 3 million. Topic. Dismantling and attempted concealment The Nazis attempted to either partially or completely dismantle the extermination camps in order to hide any evidence that people had been murdered there. This was an attempt to conceal not only the extermination process but also the buried remains. As a result of the secretive Sonder Action 1005, the camps were dismantled by commandos of condemned prisoners, their records were destroyed, and the mass graves were dug up. Some extermination camps that remained uncleared of evidence were liberated by Soviet troops, who followed different standards of documentation and openness than the Western Allies did. Nonetheless, Majdanek was captured nearly intact due to the rapid advance of the Soviet Red Army during Operation Bagration. Topic. Commemoration In the post-war period the government of the People's Republic of Poland created monuments at the extermination camp sites. These early monuments mentioned no ethnic, religious, or national particulars of the Nazi victims. 
The extermination camp sites have been accessible to everyone in recent decades. They are popular destinations for visitors from all over the world, especially the most infamous Nazi death camp, Auschwitz near the town of Oschweinchem. In the early 1990s, the Jewish Holocaust organizations debated with the Polish Catholic groups about what religious symbols of martyrdom are appropriate as memorials in a Nazi death camp such as Auschwitz. The Jews opposed the placement of Christian memorials such as the Auschwitz Cross near Auschwitz I where mostly Poles were killed. The Jewish victims of the Holocaust were mostly killed at Auschwitz II Birkenau. The March of the Living is organized in Poland annually since 1988. Marches come from countries as diverse as Estonia, New Zealand, Panama, and Turkey. The camps and Holocaust denial Holocaust deniers or negationists are people and organizations who assert that the Holocaust did not occur, or that it did not occur in the historically recognized manner and extent. Extermination camp research is difficult because of extensive attempts by the SS and Nazi regime to conceal the existence of the extermination camps. The existence of the extermination camps is firmly established by testimonies of camp survivors and final solution perpetrators, material evidence the remaining camps, etc., Nazi photographs and films of the killings, and camp administration records. Holocaust deniers often start by pointing out legitimate public misconceptions about the extermination camps. For example, widely published images in America were mostly victims of Laos-born typhus fever and at the Buchenwald, Belsen and Dachau concentration camps, the first to be liberated by American troops and the most available imagery in America. In early news reports and for years afterwards these images were often used by the news media somewhat inaccurately in conjunction with descriptions of extermination camps and Jewish suffering. Holocaust deniers, after pointing out such common errors, put it forward as evidence that extermination camps did not exist and the limited evidence about them is mostly a hoax arising out of a deliberate Jewish conspiracy. Holocaust denial has been thoroughly discredited by scholars and is a criminal offense in many countries, among them Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, France, Germany, Hungary, Israel, Italy, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Slovakia, and Switzerland. Topic. See also. German camps in occupied Poland during World War II Polish death camp controversy Soap made from human corpses Toff and Sons War crimes in occupied Poland during World War II Notes Citations <laughs> 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 <laughs>